Hello. Welcome to uh, assignment eight of the Arduino starter kit. Uh, this is the eighth project we're working on for electronics. Uh, let's take a look quickly at what you're going to need to do. The regular routine with a couple tweaks you could try at the end, which I think you'll want to do, especially when you're submitting this. Um, so watch the extra vid, and this vid is very good. You really want to watch this. It's only a few minutes. But the cool parts about this is she shows you how to externally supply this hourglass with a battery. So you could actually take it in the real world around. If you built a project on it, we know she shows you that you could make your board and uh, hook a battery to it and it could become portable. So you're not using just a five volt connection all the time. She also shows you how to tweak the code to make the uh, lights light up in a slower fashion. And I'll explain what that means right away. But this video is very good. So first of all, watch the extra video and read the project and go through everything you're going to be doing. What you're going to be doing is making a timer that lights up every 10 minutes a new light. And it starts with this sensor at the top. Because in an hourglass, if you have an hourglass, you tilt it and the sand starts flowing. Well, in this one, we have a tilt sensor and you flip it and you can hear a ball inside click. And what that is, is there's two pieces of wire and when you tilt it, the ball the metal ball inside the sensor connects it and it starts the circuit and that's when the timer starts. Just like if you flipped an hourglass. So there's a little ball. You can hear that. And if you flip it, we have told the timer to start. And every 10 minutes these will light up. Now we will tweak it a bit. Well, I did on this and you can too. Um, and she shows you how to do that too. How to tweak the code to make it light up in different ways. I added a fancy little flash at the end. But uh, read the project, wire the board and submit a picture of that, verify the code and submit a picture of that, upload and prove it works. However, we are doing that if we're conferencing, if we're doing it in person, um, if you're sending me a video of it proving that it works, and please modify the code for that. If you can't modify the code or you're having problems, I can send you my code after you verify yours and you can upload my uh, fancy code to uh, make the process quicker so it's a very short video that you're submitting if you need to submit a video to prove that it works once you've showed me that you can verify your own code and I want to look at that code. Uh, and then work on questions for project eight. Here we go. Explain uh, how we have traditionally done time performances on the Arduino in the past and how we do them in this project. Why is this new method better? Explain the millis function in real terms. What is a milli? Convert millis for a day, a minute, an hour, a second, a year, a week, and those kinds of things. Um, what is the difference in using millis in a 16-bit number versus a 32-bit number? And that's all on the first couple pages of the project book. And explain the switch used in this project and what is unique about it. And that's the tilt sensor switch. And you can explain how it's made and what it does. If done correctly, how should the digital hourglass perform? What should it do? All right, so... You do the questions and at the end, try the fun tweaks. If you have a battery and you can follow the clips like she says in there, try and hook this up to a battery at the end and see if you can make it work. Also, try and change the code so you could light it up maybe every second. How would you do that? You're going to have to go in and do a little manipulation. Prove to me that you can change it. I changed mine and I can even send you my code once you verify to look at what I've done and look at how things have been changed a little bit to make it a little different project. So. There is the digital hourglass. Now let's do a little bit of talking here first. Right, I've covered some of the basic concepts, but millis is a function, right? Before we've been using delays. Like if you want something to happen, delay 250. And that'll be a quarter of a second of delay. Or delay 500, that'd be a half a second of delay, right? Up till now, you've been doing things using a delay. It's handy, but it's, handy, but it's confining. When an Arduino calls a delay, it freezes the current state for the duration of the delay. That means there can be no other input or output while it's waiting. Delays are also not very helpful for keeping track of time. If you wanted to do something every 10 seconds, having a 10 second delay would be fairly cumbersome. The millis function helps solve these problems. It keeps track of time when your Arduino has been running in milliseconds. You used it previously in project six when you created a timer for calibration. So far, you've been declaring variables as an integer. An integer is a 16-bit number, and it can hold from minus 32,000 to plus 32,000. Those are big numbers, but if you're counting milliseconds, which is 1,000, 1,000 milliseconds in one second, you'd run out of space in less than a minute. 
the long data type, which is what we're going to use, we're going to use something called unsigned long in our code and long data types right there, right? So that this means, using the long means, uh, when a data type is called unsigned, oh sorry, the long data type holds a 32-bit number. So that's going to be 2,147,483,648 to plus that same amount. But since you can't run time backwards, you can use unsigned long, which means it's only positive. That doubles the amount and lets you have 4,294,967,295. That's enough space in millis to store about 50 days worth of time. Uh, by comparing the current amount of millis counted to a specific time when you flip the switch in our code, you can make things go on in increments. So I'll kind of move on from there. Um, the book's very useful here. This is the cool part about this. And the diagram doesn't do a good job of showing how that switch is connected. In my connection, I have connected like that. You can see there. So be careful with that. If you're not watching this, you're going to be in trouble. So I use those four pins and I put them right there like that. And there's a thing that says facing up that way. That's how I've connected this. All right. And we can go in through the code. We're going to use current time. And then we're going to use millis to do different things in our code. And I want you to see if you can go in there and where you would change the numbers. If you can't figure it out, that's not that big of a deal. But I think most of you will if you're uh, studious about it. And remember, we're in no rush in this class. And uh, that's the basics. So let's take a look at how this project will work. I'll give you a demonstration of it that it works. I'll plug it in. It will initialize. I will... Oh, sorry. There we go. I will, you can hear it, flip it. And now I have changed my code. Let's take a look. This is exciting. One. And then a few seconds later, about five seconds. Oh, two. Three. I got it. Yes. Four. And then I put something fancy at the end here. Let's take a look. Coming up. Five, and when it's complete, bum, 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 and then it stays on. And if I do that, it shuts off, and it starts again from scratch, from current time. Uh, there is my code, and I, I did some changes, right? I did some stuff, and I can share this code with you later if you want. Not a problem. Just a little bit of tweaking. I called it fancy. This is another good thing. You probably run into this problem, but if you're using different Chromebooks or different books to find your code, sometimes your recent codes aren't here. But if you search for the word or the name, if you named your sketches properly, what they are, right? So you should always name your sketch what the project is. You can search by name and it'll still show up and you can upload it to your board. So that's the biggest thing there. Um, not a crazy circuit to wire. You've got to understand that switch. All right, so let's take a look at what you need to be doing here, right? Watch the extra vid, very good, with the two extra challenges, changing the time and connecting a nine volt. Read project eight, wire the board, verify the code, upload and prove it works. Work on the questions for project eight. I will help you with this for a second. And bonus, try the fun tweaks mentioned in the video that I showed you up there, adding nine volt. So let's talk about millis. So in one second, there's a thousand millis. So in a minute, there would be one minute. How many seconds are in a minute? 60. So there'd be 60,000 millis in one minute. Now you'd have to times there's 60 minutes in an hour. So you'd have to times that by six, whatever you got for one hour. If you wanted to find a day, you would obviously times by 24. If you wanted it by a week, you could go, you could do the days times seven. Or if you wanted a year, you could do the amount that you come up with days times it by 365. And that's how you would calculate these things. Um, you're going to need to do that on a test too, so be ready for that. We've got a test coming up right away. I'm going to give you a little review assignment, uh, making some questions and stuff coming up right away. So we will see you soon. Thank you.